Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in this video I'd like to introduce you to my latest pattern, the Creator's Compendium. Now this is a zippered planner cover for holding your daily planner or your diary and inside you'll find lots of internal storage and a separate pencil case for holding stationery and all the little cute bits we like to use just to make our planner cute. Now I love using one of these to help me have an organized life but I also love to have a little bit of handmade with me every day and so this is the perfect marriage between the two where you can zip everything up keep it all neatly organized and enjoy what you've made at the same time. So in this pattern I've included three different cover designs. Now this version features a central spine and a nice big panel on the front where you can include some favorite fabric like this beautiful typewriter from Ruby Star Society. And on the back I've got my arabesque label. So this is perfect if you'd like to uh, sew this as a gift and put your personal touch on it. And the second cover I've got here is a whole cloth design. So this is just made from uh, one whole piece of fabric. And this is also perfect for showcasing um, a really large print like this beautiful bird that I've got in here from the Eden Collection by Sally Kelly. And the last cover that I'd like to share with you today that comes with the pattern is this star block design. And this is really perfect if you'd like to add um, just a little touch of quilting uh, to the front of your planner. And you can make this as bold or as muted and play with all the fabrics that you'd like. So it really gives you lots of scope for creativity. Now, one of the favorite things that I love to do is to help sewers grow their skills so that they can add new techniques to each of the projects that they're doing and take their project to the next level. So the skill builders that we'll be doing in this particular pattern are how to add this really smart piping edge. And the other thing is how to add these facing edges to the zip to increase the width of the zip so that we can fit more into our planner. Now I've designed this planner cover to fit most seven by nine inch spiral bound planner covers. And some of those include the Erin Condren Life Planner, which is what I've got in here, and the Happy Planner. So this will fit any notebook like that, provided the spine isn't too large. Now let's unzip this and have a little look inside. So inside I've got my daily planner that I use every day. Over on the left hand side here you'll find an internal zip which is perfect for sliding a little bit of flat stationery into. We've got a larger pocket here and I've just got a few cute little stickers stashed here so that I can decorate my planner when I feel like I'd like to. Over on the right hand side in the internal flap we've got two more pockets. So these are perfect for sticky notes and things like paper clips and clamps any other little knickknacks that you'd like to store in here. And here we've got a pen holder to hold your favorite pen so that you can grab it when you need it, but also have it safely secured so that it's not going to fall out. And finally, there's a little pencil case so that you can store any extra pens and markers that you'd like to stash in here. And so you can see that there's plenty of options for staying organized in the Creators Compendium. Now, if you love instructional sewing videos that help you grow in your skills as a sewist, please consider hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future patterns for me, please leave me a comment. So I'm just going to run you through some of the tools you're going to need to create this uh, creator's compendium. So just some basic sewing supplies like uh, scissors and a tape measure. Um, I like to use a rotary cutter for cutting out all my straight edges as this greatly improves the accuracy. Um, it's not necessary but it does really help with uh, the small pieces. And if you're going to use one you're going to need a cutting mat and some acrylic rulers. You're also going to need an iron to press your fabric and press your interfacings into place. You're also going to need a fabric pen for marking your fabric for this. So. I've got a choice of a few different ones here. This is a clover fabric pen. I've also got a sew line chalk marker. And this is a friction pen, which I really love for marking templates and tracing around things anywhere where I'm not going to see my line afterwards. 
I've also got a couple of glues here that I like to use to base things in place. So this is just a PVA glue uh, with a micro tip. And I've also got a Soline glue pen here. That's um, another option for you. You're going to need a tool for turning out the points of your small parts in this project. So you can have a purpose built uh, tool here or you can have a knitting needle, something pointy that you can poke the corners out with and not damage your project. The sewing needles that I recommend for this project are some slightly larger ones. So I've got either an 8012 here or a 9014. And this is just going to depend on um, what your machine can cope with, but we will be going through quite a few layers here at the end. I've got a Gudeman uh, regular weight thread here. I've got a good supply of binding clips here, which are really useful for holding lots of thick layers together. I've got uh, Dritz double-sided uh, basting tape here, which is great for holding a zip in place uh, when you need to baste that. Um, I've got my stiletto tool, which is great for holding uh, little pieces um, under the sewing machine so you can keep your fingers out of the way but still get in there and have that control. Of course, I've got my quick unpick and I've got my zipper foot, which is um, going to be essential for doing piping and inserting zips. So let's go over the interfacings that we're going to need for this project. So I've got a Pelon SF101 here which is a lightweight woven fusible interfacing and you can substitute any other woven fusible interfacing that you can uh, get a hold of. Uh, this is really invaluable for any time you want your fabric to not stretch and just have a little bit more body. So now we move on to the Pelon Craft Fuse 808. So this is a non-woven fusible interfacing. It's also fairly lightweight and it's really great for adding extra body to your fabric um, anywhere where you want um, it to not stretch and have a bit more stiffness. So you can substitute any other uh, lightweight fusible interfacing. And the last product we'll be using is the Pelon Foam and you can use either the fusible or the non-fusible. I'll be showing you how I fuse mine onto the fabric because mine is a non-fusible one and I'll show you how easy this is to use and it just adds such great body to your project. So now you need to grab a copy of the pattern and print out the templates and the instruction sheet and if possible I like to only just print out the templates in the instruction sheet. Um, if you find that you need to print out the whole thing that's fine but um, it certainly saves paper if you just need to print out the basics. So on the first page of the templates, you'll find that there's a list of all the uh, pieces that you're going to need. So you can cut all of them out and clip them on as a little label on all your little pieces so you can keep track of where everything is. So I can't impress upon you how important it is to cut out your templates as accurately as you can because each time uh, you make just a little bit of a mistake here, that error is amplified every time it's traced and cut out and sewn. And so to achieve a really, really neat result, um, if you can start by cutting these out really carefully, that will help you get a great result. So you just go ahead and cut all of these out. So here I've got the entire project all cut out and labeled here. So if we go through, you can see I've got the pencil case all cut out here with the linings and the interfacings and the exterior. I've got the inner cover flaps with the interfacings that it needs. I've got the internal pocket lining. And this is the lining for the whole project that goes inside. Now we've got all the little flaps and pockets. So we've got um, four flaps here and their relevant interfacings. This is pocket A and pocket B and all the interfacings that go with them. And the last pocket here is pocket A. I've also got my fabric pen holder here and my elastic pen holder and I've just got some 
uh, fold over elastic that matches beautifully with this. So I've got my three zippers cut to length here. This is my internal zipper, uh, my pencil case zipper, and I've also got my external zipper uh, cut to length. Now here's my two zipper tabs. This one's for the external zipper and this one's for the pencil case. And finally, I've got the four zipper facings that you'll need to put on the external zip. And this is all the fabric and interfacing we need to make the external cover. So I'll be making cover three in this version. So I've got my back fabric. I've got the three different uh, fabrics for the half square triangles. I've got my background corner squares, I've got my sashing, and I've got my foam. So I recommend as you cut everything out that you work your way through the cutting table and tick everything off as you go to make sure you haven't missed anything. So I'd love you to sew along with me in this following series of videos as I make the external cover and all the internal bits as we install the zip and finally as we sew it all together.